Paradox's 2023 announcement show just wrapped up, and we had some pretty exciting news, including City Skylines 2, Paradox's version of The Sims, and so much more. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the highlights, the trailers, the gameplay footage that they showed us, and tell you the information you need to know. Things like release date, game genre, that kind of thing. If you appreciate this kind of coverage, I would appreciate it if you grab 1,000 of your friends and subscribe. We are so close. Uh, let's jump into the first game. Of course, there'll be time cards below if you'd like to bounce around between sections and tank the watch time of this video. Uh, the first trailer that you're looking at here is from a game called The Lamplighters League and The Tower at the End of the World. A long name for a game that is essentially focused on turn-based combat but also they made a point of mentioning that this is kind of an adventure game as well. We see in the trailer that it will be released on console and PC, and that's actually a common theme throughout a lot of these announcements. Generally speaking, good news for console players. The thing that makes the Lamplighters League a little bit different is that outside of its turn-based combat, it will also, before you get into that, have what they call a real-time infiltration phase. In that phase, you and the character that you're playing, and we're also reminded that this is very much a story-driven game, are able to infiltrate a level before heading into the turn-based combat phase and perhaps scout it out, get better intelligence about what you're heading into. Or alternatively, you could look to take some enemies down. Now, of course, outside of the trailer, they did also show us some gameplay. I'll flick to a little bit of that now because I think you get a feel for both the turn-based phase and also the real-time layers that you can see playing out. Ultimately, you're playing a band of perhaps not so honourable people as you look to fight through a Cold War period and hopefully get really into that turn-based combat. I think we should move on to the next game, considering that one releases in 2023, and so does this! Tours and Tournaments for Crusader Kings 3. The next DLC is here. Well, at least it'll be coming soon. This was one of the rare announcements that we didn't actually get a release date for. What we did here, though, was that this will be a roleplay focused DLC focused around great tours and foreign realm tournaments. In my mind, I'm dubbing it the Red Wedding DLC because they revealed that we will be able to perhaps invite our foes for a feast and then dispose of all of them. Perhaps we want to become the Grand Champion. Armor and fashion will play a key role here, and of course there'll be lots of events around taxes, weddings, and a key here is that it will be intrigue focused. For free content, you'll also be the regent function, which will rule in your stead when you leave the realm, and finally console will be getting the royal court DLC too. That is all coming soon. Speaking of coming soon, we heard from three titles from Paradox Arc, a subsidiary of the main Paradox studio. The first one that you're looking at here is Across the Obelisk, or at least a DLC pack called The Wolf Wars. As you can see, it's a card game that also focuses on combat, leveling up your characters, getting new gear, that kind of thing. A fairly familiar structure, but does look fairly interesting. While this is only a DLC announcement, we also heard some new game announcements out of Paradox Arc as well. Important to note, of course, that here they're trying to bend the rules a little bit, reach out to something a bit different. Although we haven't even got to the Paradox version of Sims yet, and that is the ultimate game that will be a bit different. Uh, moving along though to Paradox Arc's second announcement, uh, the game that you're looking at here is called Mecha Bellum. Releasing on May the 11th, it is at its core a PvP auto battler. You can see here in the trailer that the players, or the maker of the trailer, is essentially deploying these mech units onto a battlefield, and then as far as we can tell, the attack starts, and from there it's likely going to be an auto battle, given that that's how they're marketing it. It does remind me of a couple of mech games that have released lately, and the gameplay itself seems to be fairly intuitive. We don't know a lot more about this game, but what we do know is that all of Paradox Arc's announcements from this will be coming out sort of within the next month or two. Across the Obelisk DLC that we looked at before is releasing on March 30th. This, as I say, is releasing on May the 11th, and then the final announcement to come out of Paradox Arc was Knights of Pen and Paper 3. And unlike almost anything else announced in their live stream today, Knights of Pen and Paper 3 is releasing tomorrow. Uh, we can take a quick look at it now, as you can see, there's only about 20 seconds worth of footage for it. They were fairly light on detail across these announcements, 
perhaps making way for some of the more exciting ones coming later in this video, particularly if you're a City Skylines fan. Here you can see a pixel art turn-based RPG, and one that they made a special point of mentioning is Combat Focused 2. As I say, it's releasing tomorrow, so if you're looking for a new pixel art turn-based RPG, and maybe a bit more gameplay to follow, then why not check out Knights of Pen and Paper 3? What we really want to check out, though, is the next game on the list, and this one is Paradox's version of The Sims, okay? <laughs> Let's transition through. They made a special point of mentioning it was the first time that they've stepped into this genre, and then this trailer begins from Paradox, Tectonic, and Paradox. Life by you. Okay, I see some people doing yoga, walking down a field. Somebody's driving a car. Here's a home with a couple of Sims, and look, we're designing a house. I'm a huge fan of The Sims, and if Paradox are breaking into the simulation, the human simulation genre, I think I'll happily check it out. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't really hear anything else about this game except for that very quick trailer. However, there will be more. An announcement event on March 20th is scheduled. I'll be sure to check that one out, and maybe you will too. <laughs> Moving on to the next item on our list after Paradox Sims, it's EU4 Dominion, a DLC focused on Spain, France, Britain, China, Russia, Japan, and others. They made a special point of mentioning that this one is about going global focusing on the most played places from players. Uh, they also made a point of mentioning that we'll receive new mission trees and game mechanics, and also that there'll be branching missions. We didn't receive a release date for EU4, however, as they went on to talk about it, they only mentioned that it will be coming really soon, or, or quite soon, something along those lines. So, EU4 fans, I'd keep your eyes peeled, and of course, if you're interested, you can wishlist it on Steam, one of the common messages that was relayed throughout the entire live stream. Next up, we saw a whirlwind of announcements, of trailers. Uh, these aren't necessarily new, unlike the final one, but they are around Paradox's core games. Here you can see, of course, the trailer for Age of Wonders 4, a sci-fi 4X strategy game, turn-based, I believe, at its heart, with a deep character creation system that we've seen Paradox show off. It also features much magic, lore, and events. I'm personally quite excited for Age of Wonders 4, and as we see by the trailer and, and many other announcements from Paradox, it's coming out quite soon. Eight, May 2nd, not April, don't get your hopes up. May 2nd, 2023. Uh, the next thing that they showed off, and if you're a regular viewer of my channel, this may not necessarily be new news to you. This is Victoria 3's patch 1.2. It was actually quite a nice trailer though. They made a point of, of course, mentioning that this will be a free update to Victoria 3, delivering on many features that players were calling for at at and around the release of the game. Military strategic objectives are first, allowing us to designate specific targets we would like our military to move towards. A little bit more player agency. Taking agency away, we have the autonomous investment pool, where our citizens can invest in a private economy outside of our control for the most part. Also an in-game music player, if you're looking to absolutely rock out while you dominate on February 25th, 1839. And finally, a suite of interface user experience overhauls. Patch 1.2 probably is the best patch for Victoria 3 so far, and it's releasing on March 13th. I will, of course, be covering it here on the channel. Next up. Announcement 6C, as I'm dubbing it, is Stellaris's next DLC, First Contact. The trailer itself was fairly light on detail, but of course because it's releasing on March 14th, we already know quite a bit about this DLC, and it's of course already available on Steam to wishlist, like many of the other things that are releasing soon. Stellaris is probably one of the best sci-fi strategy games to exist of all time, in my humble opinion. First Contact offers us a set of new origins and mechanics that will give us the chance to tell stories about civilization's early encounters from visitors from the stars. It includes three new origins, Broken Shackles, Payback and Fear of the Dark, a new pre-FTL interaction options, a whole suite of those, and some cloaking technology, because nobody saw this coming. It will be releasing, as I say, on March 14th for around 12 US dollars, a fairly cheap DLC pack because, of course, this is largely a story-driven DLC pack with some new strategy gameplay mechanics laced into it as well.
The final expansion DLC announcement came for Surviving the Aftermath. Here we're seeing the Rebirth DLC, releasing actually quite soon, I believe this month. The Rebirth DLC is of course focused around the core mechanics of Surviving the Aftermath, where we attempt to survive and thrive in a post-apocalyptic world, gathering resources, protecting our colonists, and here of course we see an opportunity to heal the wasteland as well. Could be an interesting one, but probably the most interesting announcement of all came after zooming out from surviving the aftermath when we heard about City Skylines, a game where they boasted huge numbers of players, 5.5 million new players in the last year alone. And on its eighth birthday, we got this, a brand new trailer for, of course, you may have already seen when I teased it at the start of the video, City Skylines 2. From Colossal Order, of course, the developers of the first game, naturally, and Paradox comes this trailer. And while this is not actual gameplay, as you can see, it does show off, of course, the wonderful city simulator that we know and love in a whole new light. If you're unfamiliar, somehow, City Skylines is a simulation game. It lets you pose as some kind of almighty urban planner designing a city and dealing with the traffic, pollution, consequences, everything that goes with that. City Skylines is, and again in my humble opinion, one of the best simulation games out there, and now we have this, City Skylines 2. Of course, we're fairly light on the details so far, but I'm sure Paradox will dig deep into this as we move on, given the popularity of the first City Skylines and its incredible legacy of still being played by many people to this day. We know, however, that City Skylines 2 will be releasing this year, in 2023. In fact, that goes for almost the entire announcement. Looking through my notes, I can't see a single thing that they showed off that won't be releasing this year, and vast majority of them are actually releasing over the next couple of months. Whether City Skylines the second follows that path, I'm slightly doubtful, but we know it's coming out this year, so City's fans rejoice. Thank you so much for joining me today as we covered off the Paradox announcements. For me, the highlights are probably tours and tournaments for Crusader Kings 3, Life by You, Paradox's attempt at The Sims, and of course, what you're looking at right now, City Skylines 2. Let me know below what you're most looking forward to. We can probably have a fairly good discussion and dialogue in the comments. Thank you so much again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.